Save the Cat is an outlining and storytelling technique used by Jessica Brody to publish over 15 novels. These novels were sold to massive publishers like Macmillan, Random House, and Simon & Schuster. Jessica broke down this technique in her book, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, and I have read that book. In this video, I'll be sharing everything you need to know to use Save the Cat to outline and publish your next novel. Let's get started. Save the Cat Writes a Novel is broke down into three main sections, creating a character worth caring about, the Save the Cat plot beats, and the Save the Cat story genres. We'll start with creating a character. According to Save the Cat, your main character should have three main components, a problem, a want, and a need. Stories are about the conflicts that come from overcoming a problem. So it's natural we would start here when coming up with our character. This problem should not be small or self-contained. It needs to wreak havoc over a large portion of your character's life. You have to be a bit sadistic when coming up with problems for your hero. A life in shambles requires an incredible effort to overcome, and that makes for a good story. Take Katniss from The Hunger Games, for example. She's already struggling to support her poverty-stricken family when her sister is chosen for the reaping. She has problems on problems on pro On top of a problem, your character needs to want something badly. They may want to solve a murder, land a new job, or defeat an evil emperor. What's important is they have a tangible goal that they are proactively pursuing. This is a good way to get your reader to root for your hero. Show them the goal and how the hero plans to get there and your reader will want to follow them on that journey. The goal can't be easy though or else we'll have a very short, very unsatisfying story. You have to have a force preventing your hero from reaching that goal. Maybe the murderer has a mole in the police or someone else is competing for their job or the evil emperor is on the other side of the continent. The basic questions to answer are, what does my hero want and why can't they get it? The final, arguably most important piece of your protagonist is their need. The need is the thing that, currently unbeknownst to them, will actually solve their problem. Their problem may be an evil emperor and they may want to destroy that evil emperor, but what they need is to trust in others. The character's want is tangible, but their need is typically psychological. The need is the real problem. It's where the real transformation is going to be happening. Brody refers to this need as the shard of glass. It's a psychological wound that has been festering beneath the surface of your hero for a long time. The skin has grown over it, leaving behind an unsightly scar that causes your hero to act the way they act and make the mistakes that they do. The want and need make up the A and B stories respectively. The A story is happening on the outside, searching for clues, massive battles, that sort of thing. The B story is happening internally, self-exploration, self-transformation, it's the process through which your character learns the difference between what they want and what they need. All right, so we've got a well-rounded, interesting character. Now the question is, what do we actually do with them? How do we map out the journey we plan to send them on? Well, Save the Cat Writes a Novel provides just that map, the beat sheet. The term beat in this case is basically just a moment in your plot. Some beats are a single quick moment and some beats are comprised of multiple moments. Save the Cat aims to map out the 15 beats that, according to Brody, you can find in almost every great novel. There are 15 beats separated into three acts. We'll start with Act 1, Beat 1, the opening image. In the first few pages of your novel, you'll include the opening image. This is a single scene that acts as a view into your character's status quo. The status quo in this case is your hero's world before the events of the story take place. Here you introduce the character, including their flaws, and set the tone for the rest of the story. Avoid using internal monologues or info dumps here. These are the first few pages of your story, your first chance to hook your reader. With this being the case, we should aim to open with action, action that is both entertaining and illustrative of your hero's status quo. The second beat, theme stated, is another single scene which takes place around 5% of the way into your novel. This is where you subtly introduce your protagonist's need. Since your character is deeply flawed at this point in the novel, they will of course ignore this hint, but it serves to show the reader how deeply rooted this flaw is and how it could be important later. Beat 3 is setup. This is a multi-scene beat that takes place over the entire first tenth of your novel. Throughout this beat, we'll be introducing your character and their life before the events of the story. The first two beats were only a single scene each, but setup takes the entire first tenth of your novel. If you're writing a 300 page novel, this is going to take the first 30 pages. We spend all this time introducing the hero, introducing the supporting cast, and showing that change is inevitable. We need to show what's wrong with the hero's current life and why things cannot continue on the way that they are. These scenes are spent carefully lining up dominoes so you can knock them all down come act two. If done correctly, your reader will be anxiously watching these dominoes get lined up, growing increasingly tense at their inevitable downfall. Once the world has been introduced and the pieces are in place, it's time to bring in 
a wrecking ball. Around 10% of the way into your story, the catalyst will shatter this status quo world, completely changing your hero's life. This is the reaping in Hunger Games, Hagrid's visit in Harry Potter. This is the reason you started your story when you started it. Something life-changing has happened to your character and we as readers cannot wait to find out what happens next. If you're not sure if your catalyst is big enough, ask yourself the question. Could my hero safely ignore this catalyst and return to their status quo world? So the asteroid has hit, the armies have invaded, the high school sweetheart has moved to Antarctica, the catalyst has catalyzed. Now, what is your hero going to do about it? Well, that is what we are going to figure out in the fifth beat, debate. This is a multi-scene beat that takes place from 10 to 20% of the way into your novel. This beat shows that your character is resistant to change. They've lived in this status quo world for so long. Can they really leave due to the catalyst? What will they do? How will they live? What could come next? This is where your hero tries to decide what's the next move and how will I make that move? There are two questions your hero needs to answer in this section. Am I going and am I ready? Debate marks the departure of the boring status quo act one world. Break into two is beat six. It takes place around 20% of the way into your novel and it marks the beginning of act two. The world of act one was the status quo world. The world of act two is the upside down world. Harry gets to Hogwarts, Katniss to the capital. Things are getting crazy and our hero has decided to enter that craziness. But the hero is still chasing their want instead of their need. Subsequently, during this act, the protagonist is going to be solving their problem or attempting to do so at least in the wrong way. The right way is to confront their need, but they're not ready to do that yet. So instead, they're going to be blindly chasing their want. All the while, we as readers are tensely watching, growing increasingly aware of that psychological shard of glass and its consequences. Earlier, we talked about how there's an A story and a B story, the A being external and the B being internal. So far, we've mostly focused on the set up and the A story, but as we enter Act 2, we come to Beat 7, B story. This comes around 22% of the way into your novel and serves as a way to introduce the character which represents your B story. This is often a mentor, a new friend, a love interest, a nemesis, but you can get as creative as you'd like with introducing this character. There are only two requirements for this character according to Save the Cat. They have to represent the upside down Act 2 world and they have to help guide the protagonist towards their need. One last thing to remember is that this character often did not exist in the previous Act 1 status quo world because they are representative of the immense change that has happened in their environment. This isn't a requirement, but it can be helpful in making this character stick out as a representative of the upside down world. Setup took up the first 10% of your novel and debate took up the next 10%. B8 is fun and games and it takes up the next 30% of your novel, stretching all the way from 20 to 50. In the words of Jessica Brody, the fun and games beat is probably the reason your reader picked up this book in the first place. If you're writing a mystery, this is where the bulk of the investigation takes place. If you're writing a fantasy epic, this is where we will battle and scheme. The stage has been set, the setup and the introductions are behind us, now it's time to deliver on the true premise of the story. Now, depending on your story, fun and games might be a bit of a misnomer here. Jessica Brody uses Harry Potter vs. Hunger Games as an example. Harry has tons of fun when he first gets to Hogwarts, but Katniss isn't having a great time at this point in the novel because she's just begun fighting for her life. Most likely, your character is going to have ups and downs during this beat, but it's important to know the general direction they're headed in. Are they, in general, succeeding? or failing. This is important to know for the next beat, beat 9, the midpoint. The previous beat may have been a misnomer, but this one is certainly not. The midpoint takes place exactly 50% of the way into your novel. There are three main goals for this beat. Show either a false victory or a false defeat, raise the stakes, and show an intersection of the A and B stories. For the choice between false victory and false defeat, you'll typically go with whichever one coincides with your character's momentum in the previous beat. If they were in general succeeding, if they were having positive progress towards their goal, this is the point where this character would have a false victory. If, on the other hand, they were struggling, this is the time for a false defeat. This is a false victory or defeat instead of a true one for two reasons. First off, we're only halfway done with the novel, so if it was a true victory or defeat, then I'm not sure what we would do from here on out. But also, in the context of your story, you have to remember your character 
hasn't confronted their need yet. They've been blindly chasing their want, and they can't truly solve the problem until they confront their need. We also need to raise the stakes at this point. Earlier in the story, the catalyst acted as the main source of tension, but many pages have passed since then, and the tension is starting to fade. We can ramp this tension back up by raising the stakes. Save the Cat provides four examples on how you could do this. Love stories ramp up, which comes in the form of a proposal, declaration of love, or anything else that solidifies the possibility of this relationship. Time clocks appear, which introduces a ticking clock of some sort to show the hero needs to act with urgency. A major game-changing plot twist, which is pretty self-explanatory to be honest, but can be a bit difficult to pull off. And a big party or celebration, which allows your character to announce to everyone that they are now their different act two self instead of their boring old act one self. These are just a few examples. You can raise the stakes however your story demands as long as it increases the tension. Notice in each of the examples provided by Save the Cat, the A and the B stories intersect in some subtle way. This is the last key component for this beat. Your hero is beginning to ever so slightly shift their focus from the A story to the B story, from their want to the need. Remember, they can't truly solve their problem until they confront their need. This was evidenced by the false victory or defeat. So this is a crucial point in your character's transformation. After either the false victory or defeat, your character needs a chance to either fall down or bounce back. This is what happens in the 10th beat, bad guys close in. This is a multi-scene beat which takes up the pages from 50 to 75% of the way through your novel. Whatever the general direction of your fun and games beat was, this beat will have the opposite direction. If your character was making positive progress which led to a false victory, this is when we see that that victory was actually false. The bad guys regroup, lies are revealed, the sky falls down, something happens to show that this fight is far from over. On the other hand, if your character suffered a false defeat earlier, this is where we learn that there is still hope. Also, we've begun working towards your character's need in the past few beats, and that doesn't change here. The external conflict may be going either good or bad, but the internal conflict, your character's progress towards confronting their need, is going very poorly. Very, very poorly. In fact, your character is struggling so much to confront their need that it leads to the darkest, saddest beat of them all. Beat 11, all is lost. This beat is a single scene which takes place 75% of the way into your story, right at the end of Bad Guys Close In. This is where your character hits rock bottom. The increasing intensity of the external conflict along with the devastating consequences of your character not yet confronting their need has led them to their lowest point. This is where very bad things happen. Characters die, sacrifices are made, cities are destroyed, engagement rings are tossed hopelessly into starlit lakes on rainy nights. Things are not going well. The goal here is to create a circumstance so terrible for your character that they have no choice but to do what is needed. When things get this bad, they either transform entirely or they fail. Failing would make for a rather abrupt, depressing end to this story, so instead we will move on to the 12th beat, The Dark Soul of the Night. This is a multi-scene beat which takes up the pages from 75 to 80% of the way through your novel. Remember way back in Act 1 when the catalyst struck and your character reacted with the debate beat? Well, we're back, except this time things have changed and stakes have been raised. Instead of reacting to a catalyst with a debate, we are now reacting to all is lost with a dark night of the soul. Brody calls this the wallowing beat because that is probably what your protagonist will be doing for a large portion of this section. There will be mourning, there will be long sad walks filled with monologues, there will be many emptied wine bottles tossed against the kitchen wall. Your hero is in a tough spot. This beat can be an opportunity to briefly return to the Act 1 world. Maybe your hero meets up with an old companion. These are very dark times. It only makes sense to seek the familiarity of your old world. And yet, this familiarity is not as comforting as your hero might have expected. Too much has changed. This beat is not only for anger and wallowing though, there is still a story to finish. And so eventually, your hero realizes what they need to do. They realize they've been avoiding the true problem all along. It's not the want that will solve this issue. It's their need, and this epiphany is what leads us into Act 3. We have arrived at the final stretch. Act 3, Beat 13, Break into 3. Your character has hit rock bottom and it forces them into the realization of what must be done. This is a single scene beat that takes place around 80% of the way into your novel, and it consists of one moment, the breakthrough. All of this time, your character has been dancing around the true conflict. 
the need. It's been hinted at and discussed, but your character has continued to avoid it, and us readers have been hoping, waiting for the moment when they would finally see it for the unavoidable problem that it is. Finally, thanks to All is Lost and the Dark Knight of the Soul, the protagonist has come to this realization. In the words of Jessica Brody, it's time to wise up and face the cold, hard truth. I am flawed, but now that I know that, I can fix it. This single scene is the moment your character has that epiphany, and things start moving very fast from here on out. The next beat is our second to last, the finale. This is a multi-scene beat which takes up the pages from 80 to 99% of your novel. Your hero has confronted the truth, had a breakthrough, and finally knows the right way to solve their problem. So what does this solving of the problem look like in the form of writing? Well, Brody was kind enough to provide us with the five-point finale. The five-point finale breaks this final very important section of your story into five subbeats. First, gathering the team. The protagonist needs some help before addressing the problem once and for all. Maybe there have been some bridges burned that need repaired. Maybe there's been an ongoing effort to recruit allies that reaches its climax in this section. Whatever the case, help is needed and this is the point where it's found. Second, executing the plan. The protagonist has a plan, they have the help they need, now it's time to actually do it. The plan in this case may be an all-out assault on a fortress or it could be an elaborate proposal. Either way, a plan was devised to solve this problem and now it's being executed. Third, the high tower surprise. The least surprising surprise of all the surprises happens and things do not go as planned when executing the plan. While this misstep may be predictable in itself, the details do not have to be. This is another opportunity to raise the stakes. In fact, you should almost definitely raise the stakes at this point. Your reader knew the plan. They knew the finale to come. This is an opportunity to throw in a twist which flips their understanding of the finale completely upside down. This can be the difference between a good ending and a great ending. Brandon Sanderson is the king of high tower surprises. Study his third acts both for inspiration and heart palpitations. The fourth and most alliterative subbeat is Dig Deep down. The High Tower Surprise, just like The Catalyst and All Is Lost, are life-changing events which require a moment of reflection and reaction from your protagonist. The plan has gone off the rails and your character is left face to face with the problem. Except now they have a new advantage. The theme of the story. The need. They've confronted their need. They've transformed as a person. And now that psychological shard of glass which was preventing them from defeating their foe is no longer holding them back. Fifth the execution of the new plan. Finally, after confronting their need and coming face to face with their foe, your hero enacts a bold new plan and it works. Now the problem is solved, the big bad is vanquished, and there's only one beat left. The 15th beat is a single scene called the final image. This mirrors the first beat, the opening image. We started with an opening image which provided a look at the hero's flawed status quo world. Now with the final image we take another look, showing how much this world and the hero's life has changed. They return to the shire, the coffee shop, the farming village they were born in. Whatever world they began in they return in some way but it's clear that everything about them has changed. That's why a nickname for the Save the Cat beat sheet is the transformation machine. It's a series of steps we throw our protagonist into, sending them in on one side as one person and seeing them on the other side as a completely changed character. And that is the Save the Cat beat sheet. There is one more section in Save the Cat Writes a Novel, the Save the Cat story genres. This section is massive and would probably take three or four more videos of this length to fully summarize, so instead I'll give a very brief summary. Each genre has its own idiosyncrasies when it comes to plotting. Study how other stories use these beats, how they subtly shift their meaning and order, and ask yourself, why do they do that? And should my story do that? If you'd like to learn more about storytelling, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to learn more about outlining, feel free to check out my video on Brandon Sanderson's 9-step outlining method. I'll leave you with a reminder that any writing tool is just that, a tool. It's not a rigid set of rules that you must follow, it's just another tool on your belt to help you tell your story. I hope this was helpful and wish you the best of luck in your current and future projects.